285 million people are estimated to be visually impaired worldwide. Less than 10% of published materials can be read by blind or people with low vision. Less than 10% of blind children in developing countries go to school. First they talked, then they negotiated, and finally they agreed. It took over five years. For some, it was just another international treaty. But for the 285 million people who are blind and visually impaired around the world, the Marrakesh Treaty is a promise of a better life. Penny Harton, CEO, World Blind Union. I believe that the Marrakesh Treaty is the most important thing that has happened to benefit blind and partially sighted people since the invention of Braille nearly 200 years ago. Carla Quattro, Minister of Sports and Persons with Disabilities, Canada. As someone with a visual impairment, I know how limiting it is not to be able to access all information whenever you want to access it. What I read is directly driven by the size of the font of any given book. So I walk into a library or a bookstore and I don't think, gee, I'd like to read something. I think, what can I read? And I know that everybody that has the same level of vision as me feels the same way and it's frustrating and it's limiting. So the idea that I will have access to and others will have access to a broader range of material in accessible format is very, very touching and it's exciting. The Marrakesh Treaty was adopted on June 27, 2013 in the Kingdom of Morocco. India stepped up and was the first country to ratify one year later. Dipendra Manocha, President, Daisy Forum of India. It's a very big move forward and I hope that many other countries will um, follow the Indian example and would come forward and sign and ratify the treaty. And on June 30, 2016, Canada presented the key 20th accession, which enabled the treaty to enter into force on September 30, 2016. From top government officials and beneficiaries, to music legend and blind advocate Stevie Wonder, this was a welcome milestone that will help to end the so-called book famine. Carla Qualtro. Minister Canada. We wanted to demonstrate that leadership by getting in at the ground level, by really showing our excitement about sharing our material with the world and giving Canadians access to more material as quickly as possible. Marcelo Calero, Minister of Culture, Brazil. Three years after signature, the treaty has now entered into force, but this is no time to rest. We are now working hard to mainstream the treaty's provisions into Brazil's national legislation. This is how we will ensure that Marrakesh leaves a lasting legacy in the construction of an increasingly inclusive, balanced and sustainable environment for the enjoyment of cultural rights. Diane Bergeron, Executive Director for Strategic Relations and Engagement, Canadian National Institute for the Blind. The Marrakesh Treaty, once implemented, is going to change the lives of people who are blind or partially sighted internationally, especially in developing countries where access to published works is approximately only 1% of what is available in the world. Penny Harton, WBU. Only about a third of the countries around the world actually have provisions in their copyright laws that allow for books and other published materials to be converted into accessible format without having to go to the, the publisher for permission each and every time. Marrakesh Treaty members agreed to adopt national exceptions to copyright laws, allowing books and other publications to be made accessible in formats that can be read by people who are blind or print disabled. Those countries also agreed to allow these adapted texts to be sent to other countries that are also Marrakesh Treaty members. This means more books for more people who can use them for education, enjoyment, and ultimately, employment. Francis Gurry, Director General, 
World Intellectual Property Organization. The treaty has enormous uh, practical benefits. It's not simply a question of literacy, uh, which of course enriches our lives, but it's what you can do with literacy, and what one can do with literacy, of course, is become a fully empowered economic agent. The treaty is also designed to provide assurances to authors and publishers that the system will not expose their published works to misuse or distribution to anyone other than the intended beneficiaries. José Borinho, Secretary General, International Publishers Association. The IPA, which represents world publishers, is very happy about the Marrakesh Treaty coming into force. Uh, we were part of the discussions for the whole of the uh, debates and we of course wanted some reassurances that um, publishers and authors copyright wouldn't be abused and we think that the Marrakesh Treaty actually delivers on that. Francis Gurry, WIPO. Authors and publishers I think uh, that understandably they need assurance uh, that the use of their texts, their published works, to create accessible formats uh, will be limited to the visually impaired community. That is, that the same works will not be used or put into secondary markets or parallel markets, if you like, for the seeing market. Uh, and I think those assurances are well contained in the treaty. To support the practical implementation of the Marrakesh Treaty, WIPO brought together publishers and blind associations in an alliance to boost the number of books in accessible formats, the Accessible Books Consortium, or the ABC. Margaret McGrory, Vice President and Executive Director, Canadian National Institute for the Blind Library. The Marrakesh Treaty provides a legal framework, so it allows the exchange of copyright protected works to be exchanged around the world, but as ABC, provides the systems and processes to operationalize that so that organizations like us can exchange books through ABC. Diane Bergeron, CNIB. Once the Marrakesh Treaty comes into force and implement implementation is required, the Accessible Book Consortium will help to expand their database, expand their available materials, and move through the treaty uh, in, in an operational manner. While entry into force of the Marrakesh Treaty is a welcome development, the full promise will only be realized when more countries join the pact. Carla Qualtro, Minister Canada. It's actually quite key that we get more countries involved because that helps all of us have better access to these materials. Francis Gurry, WIPO. It is only really when we have on board the whole international community that this will make sense. Uh, we do not want to create a world in which visually impaired persons in one country have greater opportunities than they have in another country. And that underlines the necessity of universality in respect of the Marrakesh Treaty. Music legend Stevie Wonder. It took three years for the required government to formally join the treaty so that it could enter into the force. Now, what I don't want to see is another three years and just 20 countries. We need to make this happen expeditiously. For how would you feel if you were not able to have a book to read or information accessible to you? We must make this happen immediately. So really our work will not be over until we remove all barriers to accessibility. Please join us in fulfilling this obligation. I'm counting, I'm depending, I'm trusting in you that this will happen.